Let's study 9th standard ICSE English Literature Story 3 A Horse and Two Goats by R.K. Narayan. This is by far the biggest story or biggest chapter in the syllabus, but it's very unique. It's mostly a dialogue between a simpleton named Muni and a foreigner, a white man. And there is a lot of comedy in this story, which also brings us the difference between the Indian culture and the Western one. So Muni is a villager, a poor villager living in a tiny village in Tamil Nadu named Kritam, which actually means crown. He speaks only Tamil. He hardly knows any English. He was once affluent. He was a cattle gazer with around 40 sheep and goats. But over time, many of the cattle had died because of disease and other reasons. And now he had just two goats left. His wife was a, a sturdy woman who would work in some of the houses, like the big house in the village, do some household chores in these houses for a living. All he would get for breakfast and even lunch would be millet. The dough of millet was uh, cooked by his wife. Some onion would also be packed so that he could eat it. The only fanciful thing he might eat sometime would be drumsticks. So there was a tree where drumsticks grew and he felt it that it belonged to him because he was the only person who claimed it. He would often collect the drumsticks, sometimes he would sell it, sometimes he would eat it. Once he fancied eating the drumsticks with sauce, but there were no ingredients to make the sauce. So when he demanded for it, his wife asked him to go to the store and buy some ingredients. Namely, dal, chili, curry leaves, mustard, coriander, ginger oil and one large potato. She mocked at him stating that he hardly had four teeth left in his mouth and yet he had a, an appetite for such things. But then he, she said that he might not be alive until next year, so it's better to satisfy his desire now. Muni was a little scared of his wife, who isn't. He was quite old too. So when he went to the shopkeeper, first of all, he tried to grab his attention by continuously coughing. <clears throat> He had no money. He, his plan was to get all these things on credit. He already owed some amount to him and hoped that the shopkeeper might be compassionate enough to extend the line of credit on him. The shopkeeper found it quite funny the way Muni was trying to attract attention but ultimately he did speak to him and asked him what he wanted and he said that he wanted some things. The shopkeeper was in no mood to give him stuff on credit again. He asked him to repay whatever was due. Muni lied to him that he would repay next month because he's going to get some cash from his daughter on his 50th birthday. He's lying through, through his teeth here. The shopkeeper was quite surprised and inquired, do you have a daughter? Which he, she, he didn't. He didn't have any child. And um, here Muni was caught red-handed. Red-handed because only a few weeks ago, uh, five weeks ago, he had made the same excuse that it was his 50th birthday and by the way he did not even look 50 the shopkeeper predicted that he was around 70 and so he refused to give him more stuff on credit disappointed Muni reached home he felt that he might have to starve for some time now but his wife told him to shoo away from home and come at sunset not before that she said that she will make, make arrangements for food she didn't want to reveal to him how and he also didn't want to question her because um, she had a temper, especially uh, during the morning and he knew that once he comes back, his wife will cool down, she would have managed to get some food, perhaps she would go to work at the big house or do some work and uh, get some food for them. So he took his two goats and uh, he took them for grazing. At the outskirts of the village, there was a, a big statue, a lifelike statue of a horse. And um, beside that, 
they also had a statue of a warrior. And the horse was prancing with two legs in the air. It seemed to be, have been very uh, colorful in the past, but now it's, it was dull and ignored by the villagers. The villagers do not care much about the statue anymore. He would often rest near the horse statue, uh, even take shelter under it when the sun was directly overhead. Hor the horse was, uh, the statue was big enough. Uh, and he would just keep an eye on the goats who would uh, chew on the leaves and the grasses in that area. He would also watch the vehicles pass by on the main road, which would be a fascinating experience for him, seeing new types of vehicles, and he would have that content to share with his wife when he goes back home. But that day, uh, a vehicle just sputtered and came to a stop, and the foreigner, an English-speaking foreigner, stepped out. He seems to have run out of gas, that is gasoline, a fuel for the vehicle. So he could only see Muni for help, so he walked up to him and uh, he wanted to ask where is the nearest uh, gas station, but suddenly his eyes fell on the horse statue and he found it marvellous, those were his words. He found the horse statue exotic. Now this foreigner, unlike Muni, uh, he was quite a rich person. He spoke fluent English, of course. He had a coffee business back home in the USA. His office was in the Empire State Building, which uh, in the past was one of the tallest buildings in the world. He is um, a member of five book clubs, so he loves reading, he loves traveling with his wife Ruth. And the first thought that came to his mind was that if possible, he would like to take this horse statue as a souvenir. He would like to take it back to his home. So he's, he started to strike a conversation with Muni. Now, Muni did not understand any English. The only English he knew was a yes, no. Those are the only two words he knew. So he would often reply to anything that the English person said with yes, no, without even understanding what it meant. The fact that neither of them knew the other person's language creates a lot of confusion in the story, which is often hilarious. Now, Muni was very scared when the foreigner approached him because the foreigner was wearing a khaki dress and uh, Muni thought that perhaps he's some police or military personnel and he felt that he should run. He didn't want to be arrested. There had been a murder at the uh, borders of Kritam village and Kuppam village. He thought that perhaps this khaki person has come to investigate the murder. He couldn't even run because he was too old. So alarmed, he tried to speak in Tamil. He said that he swear he had not committed the murder and he didn't know who did to leave him alone, not to arrest him. And he promised that if he finds out the person who had done this, he would inform the police. Now, of course, the foreigner doesn't understand all this, but out of sheer politeness, he just continues conversing with him in English. Yeah, buddy. How's it going? These are not the exact words though. Um, he offered him a cigarette. He started smoking. The foreigner offered Muni a cigarette, which put Muni at ease. He took the cigarette, uh, though he was still suspicious of the motives of this khaki clad person. It had been a long time since Muni had smoked because he didn't have the money to indulge in such a luxury. So when he tried to smoke, of course, he coughed. And then the conversation continued. The conversation... conversation uh, on one hand, the foreigner was talking about uh, his days back home in the Empire State Building, how once uh, the electricity went off and he had to stay without AC for four hours, which was a real struggle for him, not realizing that people like Muni, they have never been in an air-conditioned environment. The whole life is a struggle for them. It clearly shows the contrast between the two lifestyles here. Muni, on the other hand, was uh, just blabbering about his cattle, that he had a lot of... Uh, uh, sh sheep and goats, but they kept dying. Sometimes the wolves attack and uh, kill the cattle. And often he would uh, say in Tamil, Nana Evro Persi Ana Apre. That means I was this high when my father did this, or when I was this high when my grandfather did this. He's talking about his past. He's speaking in Tamil. Of course, in the textbook it is in English. And uh, the foreigner cannot understand a word. In fact, he's surprised and he, he asks uh, Muni that why don't you speak in English? What's your problem? Uh, he says that 
uh, throughout India. He has found many people speaking in English, so he doesn't understand why Muni isn't. Again, this shows his ignorance. He feels that the whole world should know English, even though he doesn't know Tamil. Oh, but the foreigner finds Tamil fascinating, you know, a foreign language like Tamil from Muni's uh, mouth. It sounds quite exotic. He wants to actually record it. And there are a few uh, jokes about, they talk about uh, when Muni asks uh, the foreigner whether he has any children. There's a very funny incident here because actually the foreigner is interested in buying the statue. He believes that Muni is the owner of the statue since Muni was sitting there uh, on the pedestal of the statue as if he was the owner. So there was a misunderstanding here and foreigner, the foreigner wanted to offer him uh, a, a good sum of money to buy it so that he could put it onto his vehicle and then maybe take help and refill it, go to the port and with the help of uh, uh, the ship he could transport it back at his place. He also narrates that he'll have to convince his wife Ruth about it, he'll have to shift the bookshelf back at home in the USA, in Connecticut, but he's willing to do that because he found the statue marvellous. He also goes on to uh, praise the vibrant colours used. Uh, he praises the fact that in India, colours like indigo, saffron, uh, turquoise are used for these statues, which he has never seen before with such vibrance. So when Muni asks him in Tamil um, how many children he had, uh, the foreigner said uh, uh, 100, which is quite funny because the foreigner was actually quoting the amount he would be willing to pay to Muni. 100 rupees at that time was a huge sum, especially for Muni. He had never even seen a 100 rupee note in his hand. On the other hand, when Muni realized that uh, the foreigner was pointing towards the horse statue, he started talking about the horse statue, even though he didn't know that the foreigner wanted to buy it. So he said that this horse represents Kalki. So according to Hindu mythology, in the Kaliyug, that is the bad times that we are living in, uh, Kalki, would, the redeemer, would come alive, the horse would come alive, become huge, take all the good people on its back, trample all the evil people, the bad people on earth, so that there is a fresh start, a golden age will start once again on earth. So he narrates this mythology to the foreigner, which shows that he's not literate, like the foreigner is, but he has a lot of knowledge about mythology. He was not educated because he was uh, born in a, to a farmer, and uh, since a young age, he was working in the fields with the cattle and the, the crops. He never got a chance to study because of uh, relative poverty. Muni wished that the village headman, who was also a moneylender, could be trampled by Kalki because uh, this moneylender uh, used to accumulate a lot of wealth, gold sovereigns. Also, the village headman had a grudge against Muni because uh, the headman thought that Muni's goat had eaten his pumpkin. Finally, when the foreigner kept pointing towards the horse and later he pointed towards the goats, um, so the foreigner realized that perhaps the goats were the pet uh, or the domesticated animals of Muni and it would be courteous to talk about it, to sweeten the deal while buying the statue. So Muni thought that perhaps the foreigner wishes to buy the goats. And Muni was very happy because he always fed the goats hoping that one day he could sell them get some money, buy some items, uh, food items, snack items, like nuts, coconut, etc. And he could set up a small tiny shop right there for the wayfarers, the travelers. That way he would be able to earn more. So Muni immediately agreed to sell the goats. He told the foreigner that please take them away in your vehicle. It, they might not uh, leave me. So be careful with them. The foreigner thought that Muni is agreeing to sell the statue which didn't even belong to Muni. Anyway, the foreigner gave him a hundred rupees but he gave ten notes of ten rupees each to Muni. Muni was happy, he tucked it in and he left without the goats. And the foreigner thought that the deal is concluded but he was uh, in a pickle. Now, Muni didn't even help him to get help for his vehicle. Fortunately, a truck passed by so they helped him out, they refilled the vehicle's tank with some fuel. They also helped him to push the statue onto his vehicle, which had space for it. And then he drove off. So according to the foreigner, he has 
paid 100 rupees and bought the statue. And according to Muni, the foreigner has paid him money to buy the goats who were still grazing out there. This, is a, this brings us to the climax of the story. After so much of confusion, now Muni goes home. And uh, unfortunately, his wife was unable to procure food that day. But something magical did happen. Muni showed him a hundred rupees. And the wife was excited. She questioned him from where to get it. And Muni told the truth, which he believed to be true, that he sold the goats. Just then, they could hear the, uh, the bleaking noise of the goats outside. <laughs> That was quite surprising for them. So when they opened the door, uh, Muni was shocked. His wife was also shocked. And the wife had suspicions that had Muni stolen the hundred rupees because clearly the goats were not sold. Muni was so frustrated that he twisted the ear of the goat, calling him a mischievous thing, and asked him, why have you come back? I'm not your owner anymore. Go back to your owner. As if the goats could understand. He was trying to defend himself, but the wife would not accept it. She said that if Muni had committed a crime, she would not support him. Let the police come and break his bones. She would rather go back to her parents' house. And with this, the story ends. Hi students, this is AJ Sir. If you like this video, press the like button. If you would like to enroll for my online test series or online lectures, email me or message me on Instagram. Check the description for more information.